Hello, I'm Carla Schroer. I'm a founder and director at Cultural Heritage Imaging. Today, I want to talk about photogrammetry and show you a few examples. So first, the goal of photogrammetry is that we want to create a digital surface that replicates the actual subject that we're imaging in both shape and color as closely as we can. And we also want to create image sequences that can be used by others and preserved for future generations. And also that they can be evaluated, qualitatively evaluated by others, as well as looking at quantitative estimates of the measurement uncertainty within that data. So let me show you a couple of examples. I'm going to start with this replica Olmec head. And it's at City College of San Francisco. And it was uh, placed there in 2004. So let's go look at this in photogrammetry software. Uh, I'm using Agisoft PhotoScan Pro, but the same principles would apply in any photogrammetry package and the way that you collect the images is the same in any uh, photogrammetry package. So what we have here is a dense cloud and here I can turn the cameras on. And so what this is showing is all the blue rectangles are exactly where the camera was as the images were shot. And you may have noticed in the picture here that there's a tree right here. So we couldn't get some of the images right around uh, the top there. And so instead, you'll see there's kind of a gap in, the, in that circuit so we had to move down and take those images there but we've got pretty good coverage of the whole thing and I would say this this is 335 photos it's probably a little bit overshot because it was part of a training class and we had about nine or ten people out there in different groups shooting and they were you know each doing different areas and overlapping with each other so you could probably do it with a little bit less uh, photos okay I'm going to turn the cameras off and let's talk about our 3d products so right here, we're looking at a dense cloud. And the dense cloud is a cloud of points in space. So it's each point has an X, Y, Z coordinate in space and a color associated with it. In this case, we have 16 million points in this dense cloud. And we could make uh, four times as high a resolution dense cloud from the data that we have, okay? We can turn the color off here and you can see the surface without color. Now once we have the dense cloud we can create a wireframe or mesh and so what's happening there is it's connecting the dots to create little triangles and you'll have more triangles in an area where there's a surface change, quick surface change and less in kind of smoother areas. We can also take the wireframe and show it as a solid and that can sometimes be easier for looking at really the surface uh, detail. So we've just made the, the individual triangles solid so we can see. And we also have a color mode that we can look at here. And the color mode allows us uh, to have a color for each vertex. And that's the place, the point where each triangle comes together has a color associated with it. And here we have uh, just a little over 3 million, 3.2 million faces for this, uh, for this model. And then the final thing that I want to show you is the texture map. And so the texture map is made actually from the photograph. So it always looks, well, photorealistic because it's made from the photographs. It mosaics or stitches them together and associates them with the geometry. And in photogrammetry, the texture map is always registered to the 3D because we generated the 3D from the photograph. So it knows exactly the relationship of the photographs to the 3D. Now, one thing to be aware of when you're looking at 3D data is people almost always show you the textured model with the texture map on it. And the reason is that it looks really good and also it can hide other problems with the model. And also sometimes uh, you might wanna make a smaller mesh, less mesh, what's called a decimated mesh. Uh, in, in for performance and for quick loading and so forth and then the texture map still has a lot of details but it's really important if you're going to be using a 3d model for measurement or for monitoring for example if you're looking at erosion or wear that you understand how good is the surface and the geometry and the level of detail uh, beneath the texture map so that you know if that model is going to be able to meet 
Okay, the second example I want to show you, this is from El Moro National Monument, and it's in New Mexico. Okay, so here is um, an area that we were looking at in New Mexico, and this is the dense cloud. It has about 55 million points in it. And the thing, I'll turn on the cameras here so you can see where the images were taken, is that we were really interested in some details in a panel here that has inscriptions and Native American rock art. So we took what we call a multi-resolution photogrammetry set. We got the general area from fairly far away with a wide angle, 24 millimeter lens. Um, that's all these images out here. And then we came in closer with the 24 millimeter lens. And then we also, from that same distance, shot with a 40 millimeter lens to get a lot of detail in that area we cared about. But this is a really quick way uh, and flexible way to get information about the site and what it looks like in that general area without taking a lot of time. This whole uh, process of image collection here took you know, 20 to 30 minutes, not too long at all. So what I want to do is look at a detail of the surface here and you can see the kind of information that we can get. I'll turn, take the cameras off and here is the area that has inscriptions and rock art in it. So you'll notice right here that we have an inscription. This is the dense cloud again. Um, for just this area now is 11 and a half million points because we built it at the highest resolution. And so you can see that we actually have in the geometry the inscription detail. And we also have Native American rock art detail in the geometry so that we can look at and, and be able to measure this kind of surface information. And then here it is with the texture map. So you can see what the surface looks like with the texture map. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about photogrammetry. We do have some other videos that go into detail about how to collect your image sets. But the key point I want to make here is that it's really important to follow a set of rules about how you collect your image sequence. And if you do that, you'll be able to get good, high quality results. You'll be able to quantify the measurement uncertainty and you'll get scientific, repeatable, reliable results. And I'll note that the image capture technique is independent of the software you're gonna use. So any of the different photogrammetry packages would be able to work with uh, uh, image sets that you collect following these uh, rules or core principles of photogrammetry. And one of the things that we've seen in recent years is that because the software has gotten so uh, much easier to use and so much better that sometimes people will give what we think is bad advice that you just go out and take a bunch of pictures and if you take a bunch of pictures wow look at these models that you can get and it's true that if you just walk around and take a bunch of pictures you can get a 3d model that probably even looks good especially with the texture map on it but the results of doing that will have significant error in them and that error is not quantifiable. It's an unknowable amount of error. So if you're doing scientific imaging or historic documentation, data that you want other people to be able to use, you really need to follow the rules in order to get good reproducible data. Here at Cultural Heritage Imaging, we really believe in the scientific method. And so what we do is we wanna make sure that we're following a practice in how we collect the data and the information that we collect about our data so that other people can reuse that data uh, and can replicate our work and understand the quality of our work. So keys to the scientific method are that your original empirical data has to be available for other people to use and that you keep track of what you do. You can't just show the result, you have to show how you got there. And so you need to make sure that you have good records about what you did, why you did it, and how you processed the data. We're working on some tools in that area of, for what we call the digital lab notebook. The other thing I want to mention is long-term archiving of 3D data. We think it's really important, particularly for heritage material, that we think about how this data can be archived and used in the future. So number one, you want to make sure 
that you're using open file formats, non-proprietary file formats, and that's a strong recommendation of the Library of Congress and many others. You, as I mentioned, you want to make sure there's access to the original captured data, and you want to have what we call the digital lab notebook or information about the means and circumstances, the metadata about what you did, who was there, why you did it, and so forth. We believe that some 3D technologies are more suited to archive the data than others, and photogrammetry is a good example of one that's easier to archive because it's based on image sets. So if you collect a properly collected image set following the rules, and you archive that along with metadata about how and why you collected the data, anybody into the future can reuse that data. And Archiving image sets is fairly well understood, unlike some other techniques where you might have proprietary data, it has to be converted to other data before anybody can look at it, and how was it processed, what happened, and so forth becomes a question. So, if we preserve the 3D data sets uh, then, and you followed good rules, those can be regenerated on demand into 3D. And the software is just going to continue to get better and the speed with which things can be processed will get better so the you will get the same or better result over time as the software continues to get better and that digital lab notebook data allows other people to examine your data and reuse it I just want to take a moment and acknowledge Tom Noble and Nefer Matthews who we've been extremely fortunate to have as collaborators they are incredible photogrammetrists that have lots of experience in a wide range of you know, aerial and close range photogrammetry, film and uh, digital camera based, and we really appreciate them sharing their knowledge uh, with us. It's great to collaborate with them. And I also want to point out our uh, other videos in this series, particularly the two that are on image collection uh, basics and how to capture things in the round. Those are going to help you get good quality results with your photogrammetry. Good luck. Have a great day.